Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. So today in the continuation of our series on Apache Spark Deep Dive, I have brought in a very interesting and a very unique uh, scenario based interview question, uh, which is what is the primary difference between the persistence and the broadcast? So it is not just the question would not be uh, as in a straight comparison between persistence and broadcast, but uh, there would be a scenario behind it where we are trying to look at it from the memory footprint perspective. You know, what happens behind the scene when you do a persistence and what exactly happens when you try to do a broadcast and what kind of memory footprints would be generated for the data which you are trying to persist or broadcast. So guys, let's start. So uh, intro questions uh, around this concept would be something like, you know, we, we all know broadcast is good. Yes, it expedites the joints, results in, in no shuffling of the data across. Uh, that shuffle, the small table or small uh, data frame you're trying to join would be broadcasted on all the uh, nodes or to all the nodes in the cluster where the you know uh, corresponding large data partitions are residing. Uh, so it's all good, but uh, why we need to be careful with broadcast, uh, what kind of memory utilization it results into. And uh, how and why, and how and why we have to be careful, and what happens behind the scene. Um, or a very straight question could be: What is the difference between persistent broadcast, primarily from the memory footprint perspective? I mean, nobody will ask you such a straight question, but they'll trick you from the fact. Uh, you know, what could be the problem with the broadcast? Or a good interviewer will put a scenario around it, like suppose. A very specific scenario, right? Suppose we have a data set, say, of 12 gig, say, with six partition for now. Uh, if I try to do a persist, if I try to do call the persist API or try to do persistence of this particular data set, what would be the memory footprint in this park context? And if the same data set, I try to do a broadcast, try to do an explicit broadcast, what would be the memory footprint in case of broadcast? A very specific question and looking for very specific answers, right? But there is a, a process uh, behind this, how the two APIs, two functionalities work. So let's look into that. Let's see how persist works first, right? So this is our uh, 12 gig uh, data frame or data set, right? It has got six partitions. I picked it from some data lake or from some external source. And uh, in my cluster, I only have three executors. So two partition will go to each to each to each part to each executor, right? See, it, it will go into the round robin fashion. I'll go one, two, three. It'll come back again. Partition four, then five, then six. <clears throat> In the round robin fashion, it will be distributed to the available executors to process on to process on those data sets, right? To, to process to apply the transformations on those partitions right so in that case my memory footprint uh, remains 12 gig only right i have a 12 gig of data frame it was already partitions and when i try to do a persist so in that case it was maybe in the uh, <coughs> storage memory uh, but when i'll put do a persist it'll go into the uh, worker memory of the executors right but my memory footprint on the on the executor cache will remain 12 gig itself there's no inflation or deflation of this uh, memory footprint, right? So first part of the question is what would be the memory footprint in case of the persistence It'll remain 12 gig. Let's see what happens in the broadcast. So this is how broadcast works. So when you try to, I have the same uh, data set, right? Six partition, 12 gig, right? Now I'm trying to do, uh, trying to uh, broadcast this data frame, right? In broadcast, there would be a one copy of this uh, data set or these partitions on all the uh, executors, right? So we have three executors. So three executors, when they're trying to uh, work upon these partitions, they already have uh, two partitions each. That's what they need to be in the executor cache to be worked upon, right? So up till this point, the memory footprint, even in case of broadcast remains same, is 12 gig, right? This is what we discussed, how it happens in the process, the data which we are trying to process and if my storage level happens to be memory only and if in case I do have the memory available, 
this tel gig of data would be available to partition each on the executors on the three executors and uh, but now in case of broadcast uh, driver will call the collect collect these uh, partitions from different executors get it on to the driver node and then try to create a hash map or a broadcast object for this data set and then publish this on all the three executors right so this 12 gig data set which is collected from uh, uh, different executors or collected from uh, this data set uh, would now be into would now be converted into three 12 gig uh, hash maps or broadcast objects right so it makes this it make it 36 gig now the memory footprint right now is 36 gig 12 gig of broadcast object on each of the three executors so 12 into 3 36 gig and at the same time the the previous 12 gig of data which was put into the executor cache for the processing of those partitions uh, may not be garbage collected as if now because executors are still alive so garbage collection will not try to evict the cache of the alive executors so that 12 gig is also available so the total memory footprint of uh, uh, of of the spark context in case you call the broadcast uh, with this data set would be 48 gig so it has increased four times to see and that is the caution we'll have to take care uh, of when we are doing the explicit broadcast and the amount of uh, the data that would be you know persisted or broadcasted would always be more than your underlying original data set size uh, 36 is pretty uh, pretty much understandable from the fact right uh, a single object of 12 gig there would be three broadcast objects for the three executors each copy will go on each executor so 12 into 3 is 36 gig perfect but at the same time during the processing that 12 gig of uh, memory 12 gig of data set is already available in the executor cache which is moved into the executor cache to process those partitions right so so the total memory footprint in this particular case would come out to be around 48 gig so guys this is the difference between how broadcast and the persistence work in the apache spark world this is one of the most intrinsic intrinsic and a very interesting interview question that i found and uh, if you know how the two things work behind the scene it will be a big help in terms of managing your memory in the spark world and also performing your memory management and memory optimizations so guys that's it in this particular video and definitely want to iterate uh, do like subscribe and comment uh, on the video thanks for watching have a good day that's it in this particular video keep watching have a good day